There's one more concept that I really want to talk about, about the state trees, and that is the event. So uh, you can see in 5.5, uh, there's been a change here as well. The entry conditions can require an event to enter. I'm not going to really look at that too much. As a matter of fact, I'm actually going to get rid of this distance to player entry event or entry condition, rather. Uh, we're going to just do this based on normal transitions. Just know that these entry conditions can also use events, meaning that when you're trying to enter this, a certain event needs to be happening. But the use case for that is a lot more niche. So what are events? Well, events are just messages that you can send to your stationery from other places of your code to tell it to do certain things. or more specifically, to tell it something has happened, and the state tree can then interpret that based on tags to decide whether or not certain states care about it, and if that is even like an active state or whatever, and deal with it as you set it up to. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go into the state tree uh, proper, so the thing that has both the patrol and the chase state, and we're going to change this from, instead of just using on tick, transitioning to chase if the distance uh, to the target is less than a certain amount, which is just, uh, a, a little goofy because if you sneak up behind them, <laughs> um, they won't see me, but they will still start chasing me. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of this and what we'll do, and instead we're going to do this on event. We don't need to really uh, use this condition anymore and we can set this to have a required event so we can make a tag specifically for this this uses the gameplay tag system and we're gonna add a tag named event dot scene because we're going to be using unreal's built-in perception system for this we can set this just to the gameplay uh, tags default dot ini add a new tag and now we have event dot scene so whenever this state is active and this state tree gets a event.scene event sent to it, this transition will now happen. Uh, we can set up a certain payload struct uh, to also send through certain information, and it has a bunch of different ones. So if I select a rotator, it sends through the XYZ rotation. So you can see that you can send through like fairly arbitrary data. I don't think... Uh, you can easily send through custom structs with this, as far as I have tested. So that's not exactly ideal. I'm sure that it's possible to set up within C++, though. But there's, there's a bunch of stuff that you can send through. So if you need to send through some information with your event, uh, that is likely possible. Uh, but for the most part, I just use these to update that an event has happened. And usually that doesn't really require sending through information necessarily. Uh, at which point we can just transition to something. We can set up a priority because you can send multiple events to a component like this. If multiple of these transitions were to trigger at the same time, uh, these priorities will say, hey, if you're a higher priority than something else that's being triggered in the same instance, go with the thing with your higher priority. We can even delay the transition. So if we, for instance, see the player, uh, we can say, well, wait about a second until you actually start going into the chase just to give the player a little bit of a head start that kind of stuff we're not going to do that but you could do that so then on the chase what we'll do is instead of uh, checking again the distance to player being bigger than a certain amount i will just say hey if you cannot see the player anymore i'll go back to your patrol so it'll also be a little bit easier to get rid of a chasing enemy because if i run around a wall for instance it'll uh, just stop seeing me now in an ideal world what you would do is you would still make it move to your last known location and if it can't pick up seeing you within that little last portion of the chase then it would go back to patrolling uh, but for now i just want to show you how these events work and not exactly how to like set up a more advanced like more intelligent chase routine so we're going to ignore that part of it for now. We just want to focus on the transition events. So let's set up that event. And we can make a new tag in here uh, and call that event unseen. You could technically just use the same tag for this. I like sending through a different tag to prevent any confusion, any possible mistakes happening. And having like one more tag in your project doesn't really hurt. Like tags are pretty cheap. So 
And then we just make sure that we uh, mark this with the proper tag, which uh, after making the tag, sometimes I forget to actually mark it with that tag. So don't forget to do that. Uh, and now when we get an event with Unseen, I will go back to Patrol. So let's send it these events, shall we? Because that's quite important. And the way we will do that is by making an AI controller class, because I don't think we have one of those yet. So let's make an AI controller. And admittedly, if we were using an AI uh, controller state tree, this would be a little bit easier to accomplish, but let's make it so that we can send this through with the character instead, because I still really like the idea of having the state trees predominantly be on the characters themselves. So we make an AI controller, and we'll call this AIC, I'll just call it AIC BP, AI controller blueprint, on which I'm going to put a perception component. On that, I'm going to uh, set up the sense of sight, AI sight config, uh, and we'll just kind of keep with the default uh, settings, I think. So it has a 90 degree uh, view cone, loose side radius is 3,500 units, side radius is 3,000 units. We can detect enemies, neutrals, and friendlies in this case, because we don't really have like an alliance system set up. Uh, that's another sense that we can set up if we want to. Uh, but that's not what this series is about, so we're just gonna make it sense everything, and that's pretty much it. So let's go into the event graph with the AI perception selected. We can say on perception updated, which gets you a array of every act up that its perception has been updated with. Alternatively, what you can do is just on target perception updated, uh, which will get you a singular actor which is just a little bit easier to work with because all we need to do is we're going to need to check if that actor is equal to our uh get pawn so that function is called get controlled pawn uh which we'll need to cast to our state tree character because that has on it a target variable that we made a while ago so we want to check hey did the thing that just updated our perception uh, match the thing that we're supposed to be looking out for before anybody complains about casting uh, since this is always going to be running on a state tree character anyway this doesn't cost anything because everything's loaded into memory regardless so if the thing that just updated our perception is in fact the target that we're supposed to be looking out for we're going to uh, break the stimulus so that we can see the Stimulus location. This is what you would use if you wanted to set the last known location of your character and make it move to there and like do some more fancy stuff. All that we care about at the moment is just whether or not it was successfully sensed. So we add in a branch. And if it was successfully sensed, what we do is we get the state tree component and we send. And the event we can split into its tag, its payload, in case you want to send through some information. The way you would do that is you can make an instance struct which has a wildcard so you could like set up the stimulus location and make it send that through in this way again i don't really care for that right now but that's the thing that you could do uh, if it is successfully sensed meaning that we are now within its field of view we're going to send through event dot scene and if it was a false that means that our new updated perception of that actor is that we can no longer see them so that means that we're going to send through an event dot unseen instead on the perception being false, which again, you can send through that payload if you want, but I don't care. Now we do need to go into our character real quick because uh, the AI perception component can only see things that are set up to interact with it. So we need a perception stimuli source. And here we need to say we register this as a sense on the site. And I think you want to set auto register as source uh, as being true. Otherwise, you need to, I believe, explicitly like turn on the senses. So you'll be able to see that it starts chasing me now. Uh, but as soon as I go around like a corner where it cannot see me anymore, it's going to start losing interest and stop chasing me. And then it just goes back uh, to patrolling. In much the same way, as long as I like, stay behind it, there's going to be no chasing happening either because it's actually relying on Unreal's sensing system, which has like a system for field of view and all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot more intelligent now uh, working with this stuff uh, for perception. 
and we can use the transition events to make use of that. So these transition events can be really, really powerful in a lot of ways. And the AI is kind of freaking out because it could see me, but had no idea how to reach me. So that's kind of funny. So there's a quick little addition uh, to round out everything about state trees. There's always more to learn. There's always more to do. These things can be used for so much more than just AI as well. You could use them for dialogue trees. You could use them for quest progression system, which I have an entire like custom quest system already uh, up on this channel. I might redo a quest system and actually also a dialogue system. I might redo both of those in the future using state trees because they are such a powerful and flexible tool to use for so many different things. They're a little bit less flexible by making your entire custom system from the ground up in a lot of ways, but they're also a lot more user-friendly and have a lower barrier to entry once you actually start understanding state trees as a whole. And then you can start applying them in every little bit of your game, which is going to make your life a lot easier. So this is going to be it for now for state trees, but don't be surprised when you see more state tree related content popping up on this channel in the future. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.